So they're trying to, they, they've got an equation that pulls together quantum mechanics and general relativity. They want to solve that equation. And if they get a universal wave function that includes as a possibility a universe like ours they will they will then say we've solved the problem of the origin of the universe the math this mathematical apparatus and these laws of quantum mechanics um explain where the universe came from how does but how does a math equation explain creation well know. that is the rub you've already hit you've already touched on the key issue welcome today the question at hand can math prove the existence of god featuring insights from frank turek william lane craig and stephen meyer Ever wondered how a mathematical equation could explain the universe's origin? Or how math's conceptual nature implies a mind behind creation? We'll tackle these questions and more, addressing common objections to the existence of God. Discover how the unreasonable effectiveness of mathematics might point to a transcendent intelligent mind. Stay tuned for a thought-provoking journey into the intersection of science, math, and faith. Is the rub? You've already hit. You've already touched on the key issue, and right. Vilenkin himself notices this right. on the last page of Many Universes in One. He says, "What tablet could these purely mathematical laws of quantum mechanics be written on? Before there's matter, space, time, and energy, there isn't a universe for them to describe. And yet, math in our experience, and now paraphrasing, he says, is conceptual. It exists in a mind." So are we really saying that there is a mind that predates the universe? Big hypothetical question. You know, he leaves the question mark hanging. There's a couple more paragraphs in the book. He never answers the question. But Hawking himself was sensitive to the same problem with quantum cosmology. He said, what puts fire in the equations that gives them a universe to describe? Math by itself is causally inert. It would be kind of like saying that the longitude and latitude lines on the on a map are responsible for building the Himalayan mountains. No, the, the the longitude and latitude lines, the math is just a description. It describes what could be there. That's all the quantum cosmological equations are doing. It, it doesn't create a universe. Mm. And and in fact, if the therefore if the quantum cosmological model is true, if math predates the universe, there must be a mind in which to hold that math. Mm -hmm. Math doesn't just float around disembodied. It, it's it's a, it's a, in our experience, it exists in a mind. So I think the quantum cosmological approach, even if true, doesn't undermine the cosmological argument. It reinforces it in an unexpected way, and in a couple of others that I haven't mentioned. Yes, it's, uh, in fact, Bill, you and I were at ETS talking about, and with an assist from Steve, because Steve had sent me an article on this, the idea that math appears to be the product of a mind. Yeah. Maybe you can comment on that for us, Bill. Well, this came to my mind as I was listening now to Steve speaking. This connects with another very powerful argument for the existence of God that, uh, goes by the the uh, name the uh, unreasonable effectiveness of mathematics after an article by eugene vigner nobel prize winning uh, quantum physicist and the question vigner asks is how is it that mathematics which as steve said is causally a feat has no effect upon anything and is pursued a priori for aesthetic reasons without a view toward empirical adequacy how is it that mathematics applies in such uh reticulate detail and accuracy to the physical phenomena of our universe and Wigner argued that there is no rational explanation for this he says that the applicability of mathematics is a miracle. Uh, it is a <laughs> gift which we neither understand nor deserve. Well, Wigner never took seriously the hypothesis that the applicability of mathematics is literally a miracle. And mm -hmm. I think that that's the best explanation, that the universe was built on the mathematical blueprint of a transcendent intelligent mind that conceived it and then created it uh, on that pattern. And hence, mathematics is applicable in such detail and accuracy to the physical world around us.
The cosmological argument for the existence of God suggests that the origin of the universe can be explained by a mathematical equation. This idea is based on the combination of quantum mechanics and general relativity, which are two well-established scientific theories. Now, the atheist's objection is that math is a product of human minds and cannot exist independently. They argue that math is simply a tool we use to describe the world, but it cannot create the world itself. However, I'd like to counter this objection by pointing out that math is not just a human construct. While it is true that humans have developed mathematical concepts and equations, the underlying principles of math are discovered, not invented. For instance, the laws of physics, such as gravity and electromagnetism, are mathematical in nature. These laws govern the behavior of the physical world, and they are not created by humans. Instead, humans have discovered these laws through observation, experimentation, and reasoning. Moreover, the mathematical equations that describe these laws are not just descriptive, they are also predictive. They allow us to make accurate predictions about the behavior of the physical world, which is strong evidence for the objective existence of math. Now, let's address the question of how math can explain creation. The idea is that the mathematical equations that govern the behavior of the universe are not just descriptive, they are also creative. They have the power to bring into existence the very fabric of space, time, and matter. This may seem like a stretch, but consider the following analogy. A blueprint or a recipe can be used to create a building or a cake. In the same way, the mathematical equations that govern the universe can be seen as a blueprint or a recipe for creation. But here's the thing, a blueprint or a recipe requires a mind to create it. It requires intention, purpose, and intelligence. And that's exactly what the cosmological argument is suggesting, that the mathematical equations that govern the universe require a mind to create them. Now, I know what you might be thinking. But what about the multiverse hypothesis? What about the idea that our universe is just one of many universes that exist in a vast multidimensional space? Well, my response is that even if the multiverse hypothesis is true, it doesn't negate the need for a mind to create the mathematical equations that govern our universe. In fact, the multiverse hypothesis requires an even more sophisticated and intelligent mind to create the mathematical framework that governs the behavior of multiple universes. In conclusion, the cosmological argument for the existence of God is a robust and evidence-based argument that suggests that the origin of the universe can be explained by a mathematical equation. While there are objections and concerns raised by atheists, I believe that these objections can be addressed through a careful examination of the evidence and a deeper understanding of the nature of math and creation. Ultimately, the question of whether math can explain creation is a complex and multifaceted one that requires a nuanced and thoughtful approach. But as a Christian apologetic, I believe that the evidence points to a transcendent intelligent mind that designed and created the universe using mathematical principles. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video and want to learn more about the cosmological argument and the existence of God, be sure to like this video to show your support. Subscribe to our channel for more content like this. Share this video with others who may be interested in this topic. By doing so, you'll be helping us spread the word and create more content that explores the intersection of faith and science.